Hello and good afternoon. You're now with me, Ruben Gomez for TBS News at 5. Let's move on to the news. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah today clarified that the death of Health Ministry frontliner Dr. Ali Noor Hassan was neither due to COVID-19 nor work fatigue. Dr. Noor Hisham said Dr. Ali died of other diseases but further declined to elaborate on the matter. In a statement through his Facebook page posting, Dr. Noor Hisham urged people to respect Dr. Ali's family and not to speculate on his death. He said the COVID-19 test done on Dr. Ali was negative. He also said Dr. Ali, who died on the 9th of January 18th, had been admitted to Kuala Lumpur Hospital in December 2020 for other diseases and had undergone several treatment sessions. The pandemic has underscored the severe understaffing of the health workforce. Many doctors forced to be placed on an increased number of calls compared to previously. This shortage of doctors exists at both the specialist and medical officer levels. The Malaysian Medical Association MMA urges the government to immediately create more permanent posts for medical officers as part of efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. MMA President Prof. Dato. Dr. Subramanian Munyandi said that addressing human resource issues in government healthcare is vital in the fight against COVID-19 and beyond. He thanked the government for recognising the need to boost healthcare in managing the pandemic by giving additional allocations under the Permai Assistance Package. MMA also called on the Health Ministry to improve measures to safeguard the health of all clinical staff, other than physical health. Subramaniam said it is also important to look after the psychological and mental health of medical personnel. Police found an unclaimed parcel containing four compressed lumps of marijuana with an estimated weight of 2.10 kilograms from a courier service in Jalan Batu Kitang. Padawan District Police Chief Superintendent Aidil Bolhassan said the courier company staff contacted the police to inform them that there was an unclaimed parcel sent from a company. The address originated from an auto company from Petaling Jaya, Selangor, suspected to be involved in drug trafficking. Aidil said the recipient of the parcel was addressed to Batukawa New Township Commercial Centre at Jalan Batukawa, Kuching. It was supposed to be collected by the recipient. The items were later seized and was brought to Padawan Police District Headquarters Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department for further action. No arrests have been made as the parcel was unclaimed. The case will be investigated under Section 39B of the Dangerous Drugs Act 1952. The cooking oil subsidy strategy implemented by the government has reduced the negative impact of palm oil price fluctuations in the world market on local consumers. The crude palm oil CPO prices had risen significantly during the period of July 2019 until January 2021. Therefore, Minister of Plantation Industries and Commodities Dr. Dr. Muhammad Khairuddin Aman Razali said the increase in cooking oil prices in the local market was still small. Muhammad Khairuddin said during the 2019 until 2020 period, the average CPO price in the local market recorded the lowest level of 1,879 ringgit per ton in July 2019. The highest level was at 3,620 ringgit 50 cent per ton in December 2020. The price of palm oil and palm-based products is determined by the world market involving factors such as demand and supply of oil, as well as world fat and various other factors. Muhammad Khairuddin hopes the global palm oil price will continue to remain high for the year 2021 so that the people could enjoy the benefits of the price increase through its returns made by the government. Welcome back. Palm oil production in Malaysia is being dealt a double blow. From a persistent shortage of workers to harvest the crop and torrential rains that have triggered floods in key growing areas of the world's number two supplier. Relentless heavy rain and thunderstorms have led to flash floods in parts of Sabah, Sarawak, Johor, 
Pahang and Pera, the biggest palm oil producing states in the country. Palm trees are typically water-loving and resistant to wet weather. Prolonged floods could prevent harvesting, which leads to overripe fruit and poor oil quality and disrupt transport of fruit to mills. Malaysia's reimpositions of lockdowns from January 13th and a state of emergency that may last until August complicates the recruitment of foreign labour that the palm industry is so desperate for. In Sarawak, Malaysia's second biggest palm growing state, the drop in yields may be more severe than the 15% to 20% initially estimated over the next two months. Andrew Cheng, CEO of the Sarawak Oil Palm Plantation Owners Association, said that as the acute workers shortage compounds production problems caused by flood waters, this have inundated plantation and interrupted harvesting. A tragic for a 17 years old student from his first day of school. A Form 5 student has suffered from serious injuries after he had allegedly fell from the third floor of his school in Petrajaya. This morning. The incident occurred at 6.30 a.m. when the victim has just begun the first day of this year's school session. Kuching District Police Chief ACP Awang Din Awangani, when contacted, confirmed the case, said the matter is still under police investigation. The victim was rushed to the Sarawak General Hospital and is currently warded at Red Zone at the Accident and Emergency Unit. Fire and Rescue Department personnel involved in the fight against COVID-19 will receive a one-off 300 ringgit payment. The payment is as announced under the Pelindungan Economy Dan Rakyat Malaysia Permai Assistance Package. Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamarudin said this showed that the government very much appreciated the hard work put in by them to help curb the pandemic. When unveiling the 15 billion ringgit per mile on Monday, Prime Minister Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin said a one-off payment of 500 ringgit would be given to all healthcare frontliners. However, the other personnel involved in the COVID-19 pandemic fight would be given 300 ringgit in the first quarter of this year. Zuraida said Permai, which contains 22 initiatives, proved that the government was proactive in managing the economic impact from the implementation of the Movement Control Order 2.0. Well, that's conclude the 5 p.m. news. Remember, tonight, lock your time at 9 p.m. with Gaspi Rassi, only on Astro Channel 122. And also remember, for 11.30 p.m. Nightline with Cheryl Shaminato, Ruben Gomez, anytime. Anywhere.